Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating a blue themed snail mail package. Now a little while back a few people asked me in the comments if I could create a snail mail package only using one color so today I decided to only use the color blue. I had a few really cute stationery products that were blue so that's why I decided to go with the blue theme and I also want to challenge you guys to pick a color and see if you can create an entire snail mail package using just that one color. Now I'm also going to challenge Vivian from the paper letter blog to see if she can create an entire snail mail palette package only using the color green. Now I've already asked her on Instagram and she said she's more than happy to join this little challenge so I'm excited to see what she creates. She hasn't stated if she's going to do a video or just going to post a photo on Instagram um, but I am excited to see if she can create an entire package um, only using a green theme. So what I've decided to do is create a it's sort of like a flip book. Um, I'm basically just putting envelopes, pockets, and <laughs> lots of things together to create this. I had no idea what I was designing at the very start, but it somehow turned out to be a blue snail mail um, letter of some sort. I basically put it all together using washi tape, as I said, and put all the goodies inside with different pockets and envelopes to create those pockets as well. And it all sort of came together um, nicely. So I hope you guys like this design and let me know if you do use it in the future. Now, I also just wanted to do a little Q&A with you guys. So a little while back, I asked on my Instagram story if you had any pen paling questions and I got a whole bunch of them. So I thought I'll do a mini Q&A with you guys. So let's get started and we'll go through the first question. So we've got, um, what's the first one? Let me pick one here. Do you think pen paling is expensive? Now, it really just depends um, who you're sending letters to. So internationally, it can become very expensive. If you're sending packages instead of letters, then yes, it can be very, very expensive. So if you're only sending small letters around your own country, then, um, then it can be quite cheap. So when I first started pen paling, I only sent letters in and around Australia to people I knew. And I didn't add a lot of stationary goodies because I didn't have a lot back then. I basically just bought things from the op shop. So I bought Frankie and Flo magazines. I cut them up and I used to collage with them. And then I would write a long letter and I might add like a drawing or something. So it used to only cost me a couple of bucks. Now I have a little bit of a bigger budget. YouTube actually pays me. There's ads on my videos. So I get a little bit of a budget from YouTube. Not a lot to create a salary or anything like that. But I have enough to cover this hobby. So I would say, look, if you're only sending small letters to people in your own country, then it can be quite cheap. But the more letters you send internationally and the bigger the packages are and the more that you put in into it and the more stationery you buy, then it can become a quite expensive hobby. All right. How to keep the content of the letters fresh. So a few people have asked me about what, what to write in letters, what to write someone for your first time, um, how to get motivated. Basically, I always used to start my letters with asking someone about um, their hobbies, their interests, going into a lot of detail about this. So asking things like, who's your favorite directors? Mine's Wes Anderson, um, it used to be Tim Burton. And then I watch a lot of, um, Ghibli studio films. So once you ask someone this, then you can go in a little bit more detail. What's your favorite movies of these directors? Um, do you have any Netflix series? I know that once you've gone past the interests and hobbies and what people like, then you can go in a bit more detail and ask about stories so you can ask people about their hometowns what they did as a kid what their favorite memories were as a kid and then you can go in a bit more detail around all that so even if you 
potentially want to visit their hometown or country one day, that's when you can go into more detail and ask about certain areas of their country or hometowns that you want to go visit, see if they can get like a little itinerary for you and things like that. So I would say work on the things that they've told you and see if you can go on more detail. One time someone told me about that their interest was around gardening and then I started going into more detail about um, what sort of plants they in their home, how they took care of them and things like that. So it's sort of just like a conversation. It builds over time. The more you get to know someone, um, the more you build up that conversation. So another thing I used to always talk about when I wrote long letters was around traveling. I went back and forth with someone talking about adventures that I want to go on, um, trips that I've been on, and I could honestly write pages of information around my trips. I sometimes write itineraries for people. I used to put together great places around my hometown for people to see so once you have a topic that you like talking about you know the other person's interested in then you can go um, you can really write a lot about it so for example someone I used to um, used to write letters to loved Harry Potter and then we went into so much detail around who what our houses that we um, thought we would be selected and put in were and things like that and then we wrote little Harry Potter quizzes where you could go true or false and circle it so you can go into a lot of detail about hobbies and interests um, I used to create a lot of Studio Ghibli letters for some people and then send them things and ask them what their favourite movies were and what they liked about that movie and things like that so you can really get a lot of inspiration from someone's likes and hobbies and then go into a lot more detail then you can get to know that person a bit more and ask them what their childhood was like or um, what their future plans are and things like that so unless you know someone well and you've really built that relationship up that's when you can go into more detail I hope that answered your question <laughs> Um, some other people have written, um, in their questions, how much should I, like, how long should my letters be and how long should the intro be? My intro letters were, I used to start off with around two pages. I would let them know a little bit about myself and then ask a whole bunch of questions. So uh, I would say, hi, my name's Brittany. I'm, um, 25. I'm 25 now. <laughs> I'm 25. I love to craft, write letters, do this. These are my favorite artists. These are my this, this is that. I'd go into, um, interests, hobbies, and then I would give them a bit of a story about what's happening recently. Recently, so um, recently I decided that I'm going to be moving to Brisbane soon. That's very exciting. Although that's been put on hold for a little bit, um, I'm excited to see what future plans are going to come around from um, over the next couple of weeks or whatever it is. So I would always just give them an overview basically and then ask a bunch of questions. So yeah, majority of my intro letters used to be around like one or two pages. Um, do you think pen pal is expensive? We've gone through that. Um, how do you know how many stamps you should put on a letter? I have no clue. <laughs> I always go to the post office and ask them because I get letters from all over the world and I can't keep up. It can be very confusing. <laughs> Um, how do you store your letters? Do you have an effective way of storing them? So I would love to own a huge filing cabinet and keep all my letters, but I've just got too many that I'm just going through them one by one, keeping all the goodies. And then I basically take out all the pretty collages and artwork and then scrapbook all of those with the letters as well. So basically just scrapbooking the letters and then putting the goodies in my stationery um, boxes. But yes, I would probably love to have a filing cabinet where I can just pop them all in there. <laughs> um, how do you stay on top of your letters and deadlines? So my deadlines, if you're talking about YouTube, Basically, I've become, I've basically got a routine from YouTube now. I don't have to think about it much anymore to make one video a week. If I make two or three videos a week, it's only because I've got extra time. So I, yeah, deadlines, I just, I'm stuck in a YouTube routine now where I just know every week I've just got to make one video and edit it. So I'm quite quick at that now. And then in regards to staying on top of my letters, I never stay on top of my letters. I'm so bad at replying. I'm sorry to anyone who's written me a letter and I haven't replied. 
It's just that I used to actually reply to every single letter that came in my PO box and I used to put so much pressure on myself and now I've just said, look, I'm trying my best. I'll do my best and I want to keep making it fun. So if I do have pen pals that I've had for a while, I will reply back. But um, at this stage, I've just not putting that pressure on me and I'll reply back when I've got time to relax and write that letter. So it's not so much that I'm staying on top of it. It's just that I'm trying to give myself a little bit more, not, not so much time. It's that I'm just putting less pressure on myself to reply back to everyone. So, um, yeah, I've made it very clear on my channel that I'm not accepting any more pen pals and I unfortunately have to decline a lot of um, offers for pen paling as well. Alrighty, what's next? How do you get inspiration to write letters? Um, if I'm not in the mood, I don't usually write letters, but hopefully you've built up a relationship over time to go back and forth with each other with questions and answers. If someone isn't giving you a lot of, like asking a lot of questions, then I would say start doing mail tags. So include a mail tag with a bunch of questions and get them to reply and then ask, maybe just ask for a mail tag back um, if you aren't getting a lot of questions or you might just have to find a new pen pal and end that one if it's just not going anywhere. And sometimes they don't. It might just be a couple of letters back and forth and then you just finish it up. So just be wary who you're wanting to build those relationships with over time. All right. That is the majority of the questions today. There's a lot of similar questions in here. So if you have anything else that you want me to answer, let me know in the comments below. Um, but another popular one a lot of people ask me is how to find more pen pals. Um, just be wary that if you only have one or two and you just want a couple more, then that's fantastic. Um, but just be wary that if you build up a lot of pen pals, that it does take a lot of time and effort to maintain those relationships. Um, but if you are trying to find them, I used to go on Swapbot when I first started. But friends and family is always the best place to start. So if you have friends and family that have, live far away or that would like to go into detail around um, and writing letters to you, start there. If not, if you are at an age where you feel comfortable going online and asking people um, for their addresses to write letters to people, then Instagram is also a great way of finding people, especially in posts. I know Vivian from the Paper Letter blog has posts on her Instagram to find pen pals in the comments. And you can go down to my comments on YouTube and see if anyone's looking for a pen pal as well. There's still people from writing on my comments from like two years ago on some of those videos asking for pen pals. So a lot of comment sections on Instagram and YouTube, you can find people who are looking for pen pals as well. All right, that's it for me today. I hope to enjoy this blue theme mail. Please tag me on Instagram if you create your own mail with only using one color. I'd love to see it. And I'm also looking forward to seeing Vivian's uh, mail as well. So thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.